Okay, uh, more of section 3.7, and again, we're just using the uh, power rule expanded to uh, to include now rational exponents or fractional exponents. And again, I rewrote it over here. If y equals x to the n, y prime equals n times x to the n minus 1. So here we have a, a function, uh, y equals x times the square root of x squared plus 1. So I'm going to write this using fractional exponents, so x times x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. And again, looks like we're going to have a chain rule. So basically, we just took the derivative, and this is actually using the product rule. The product rule. In other words, we've got first times the derivative of the second. So the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second. Now, I do have to apply the chain rule. So the, the derivative of the second will be 1 half something to the 1 half minus 1, which is negative 1 half. All right? And that's the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function times the derivative of the inside function and what's the derivative of x squared 2x I wrote the derivative derivative here in orange that was the derivative of the inside function right so that's the first times the derivative of the second so the derivative of this again is one half this to the negative one half I subtract one and then times the derivative of the inside function, which is the derivative of this x squared plus 1, which is just 2x. And then plus the second, which is this, times the derivative of the first, which is just 1. And then we can cancel the 2, or 2 over 2 is 1, and I can put the x squared, x times x in front. And this was the way I think the answer was in the book. x squared, because the 2 is canceled, put the x in front, x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half, plus x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Okay, now sometimes you won't see the answer like that some, if it's a multiple choice. Sometimes they kind of use least powers to, to doctor it up. So I kind of kind of expand this so you can see it. That's why I covered it. It's kind of complicated. And I'm kind of do, doing kind of the technique we used in the summer when I was showing how to do least powers. In other words, we're going to factor something. We've got two terms here. Okay, two terms. Okay should emphasize that we do have those two terms here. So those are those two terms, all right? Two terms. And I have a common factor in each term, and this term, uh, I'm sorry, common binomial factor of x squared plus 1, x squared plus 1. So I'm going to factor this out and it's going to be the least power and the least power was negative one half so I wrote this x squared plus one of the negative one half and then I'm going to factor this out of both terms so out of this term the x squared stays the same and this is the x squared plus one to its negative one half and remember we're going to subtract when we divide so we'll subtract this exponent so minus negative one half plus and then this term which is written just like this x squared plus one to the one half and I'm going to subtract again when I'm factoring out negative one half so that's clear. Okay. So this stays the same. This stays the same. And then negative times a negative is a positive. So negative one half plus one half is zero. And a negative times a negative is a positive. And one half plus one half is one. Okay. And then I can put this in the bottom to make the exponent positive. So we did that. So this goes in the bottom, and then I've got x squared, and anything to the zero power is 1, so I've got x squared, and anything to the first power is just that anything, so x squared plus 1. So this simplifies to be x squared plus x squared plus 1, all over x squared to the 1 half, and then x squared plus 1, x squared is 2x squared plus 1, all over this. So this is a little bit shorter and more compact than this answer. This answer has got two terms, positive, negative exponents. This has got just one big fraction. Exponents are all positive. And then we could write it in even back to radical form there if you wanted. So a, a lot of different forms you could see these answers in. Okay. And then number 39. This wasn't quite as dense, so it's a little bit easier to follow y equals the square root of 1 minus the square root of x. So I wrote this as an, everything in exponential form. Or I'm sorry, yeah, exponential form. So the square root, which is 
the one half power, and then one minus in this the square root of x is x to the one half. And again, we're going to have a chain rule. So again, we're going to take if we take the derivative, we're going to have one half this to the negative one half, subtract one, one half minus one is negative one half, times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of one is zero, and this is negative, and this is going to be one half x to the negative one half. Now we can multiply these, these one, negative one half and, and one half is negative one fourth, and then I've got this one minus x to the one half to the, to the negative one half power times this. And actually I believe that's the formula that the book had the answer. But we could simplify more. We could put everything on the bottom and make a positive exponent. So we could put, say negative 1 and we'd have the 4 and 1 minus x to the 1 half to the 1 half power, positive, and this is x to the 1 half power. And then we'd write everything in, in, uh, back into radical form. So this is the square root of x. So I got 4 square root of x and then the square root of 1 minus the square root of x. So you can see it in this form also. So try to be aware of what they might do, you know, with you algebraically.